Welcome back, Zero K fans, to the March 2019 1v1 tournament. I'm your host, Dominic. We have Mount 5. Round 5 is starting out. We're going to be going into Space T versus Izaride as our first game, or, well, possibly only game, depends on how long it takes, on Tartarus. A map, I mean, this is the thing with these tournaments. A lot of the maps we haven't seen in a while. So, kind of a thing to get used to. But it's a map we haven't seen in a while. Also, hello to all the people who don't normally come in the stream, because we have a lot of people on the stream. So, hello and welcome. Anyway, let's get to the game. So, we're on Tartarus, a map which is very small and very cliffy, and this area here, this this area right here. Like, pay attention to this. That gets all the attention, and northwest as well. Okay, what the heck is happening to my minimap? Well, everything's just kind of falling apart. Everything's falling apart on my end. How are you guys? Alright, let's go. Okay, Proxy... Okay, let's get the game. Proxy Hypercraft from Space T. Trying to easily take this... Well, maybe take the Southeast. The Recon Commander is definitely going to be able to take the Southeast. On the other hand, Izzeride going for pretty safe tanks. Don't want to really go for anything too risky. Just let's go for tanks. Just get that set up. Make that work. It all works. It's a good idea. But the one thing is those tanks are not going to be able to deal with the northwest or southeast. So I like the way that Space T is starting this out, assuming that they're going to go in, but they're not. They're going straight in with the commander. They're not even going to try to go in and do any sneaky things at the top. This is a commander mace rush. Win or lose on this commander mace rush. Izzeride is definitely better prepared for this, but Space T wants that cheese. We might have an episode of cheese fails, which actually don't have a thing for 0k when 0k cheese fails, because half of 0k's plays could be classed as cheese. <laughs> oh, not, not really. But... Zero K is one of those weird games where there's a lot of wonky stuff happening. Still, though, Space T able to do some damage to the commander. I'm not sure. Oh, there's the. I was going to say, I'm not sure why they aren't upgrading the commander. Because they haven't yet. But there's the mace coming in, and this is going to be tricky. Blitzes are being built, and the Wizard Kodachi already built up, going in to try to scout out where the factory was, but it's a proxy factory. And it was a good choice by Space T. Well, the mace coming in here, is it going to be able to get rid of everything? It should be able to get rid of the commander if. Okay, there's the commander coming from Space T to help out. Get rid of Vizzerite's commander. I mean, the welders are doing what they can, and they're actually doing quite a lot. Stopping that first mace, and that is going to be at least a bit of reprieve. But the question comes down to whether or not this Blitz is going to be able to do the trick before this scalpel finishes it up, or the commander finishes it up. And no, it does not. Scalpel commander might be able to finish out this game, giving Space T a win. I mean, it's a bit of a cheesy win, but it is best of one in a tiny map. And bear in mind, the players do have some choice over the maps. The maps... I'm not sure what the exact list of maps were that could have been used. I could double check. I think the... Yeah, the list is on the tournament page, so I can easily double check. Round 5 maps were Incandescence, Tartarus, and Krubic Plains. I don't know why the other two were banned. I mean, cheese is a thing that happens on small maps pretty often, but that is going to be Space T taking the win. Possibly. Possibly. This is still... We're still going on the game here. The Kodachi could still start taking out the factory. It'd be a long process, but that's kind of all that anything that Israel has. On the other hand, Space... No, Space T's reclaiming a bunch. This... Space T, just go for it. Just go for the kill. You're building stuff anyway. I do like the fact that the Kodachi is trying to deal with this factory. It won't go down immediately, but it is going to stop things from being built. That's the important thing. Just stop Space T from actually reinforcing their force. That leaves Space T only able to build up defenses, and Izzeride's building up a fairly strong set of defenses. I could see maybe Space T building up a Stinger if they morph into Carver Paras and Analyth. And a Stinger would give them. What would it give them? Yeah, it'll let them get rid of some of the Lotuses. And maybe some of the Pickets that they didn't mind taking too much damage. But Space T just. Okay, it wants Izzeride to stop. Actually, Space T's not going to be able to stop it in time. That hovercraft platform is still coming down. Izzeride able to successfully get rid of Space T's factory. Space T has no reinforcements. They have to be super careful. It is a tactics game for them now. I mean, they're reclaiming, and I like that. And they're building up some metal, and I like that. But they're going to need to get a caretaker in a factory if they want to build up anything quickly. Izzeride should be able to rebuild themselves faster, actually. Depends on what the Kodachi does. The Kodachi, at this point, just hanging on the north side of the map. Not really worried too much about what's going on. So we're going, you know, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna chill here. I like this place up here. It's good. It's comfy. I don't get to die. Also, double check for whether or not Space D built some cheese. Well, not like cheese, but... Wants to double check whether or not any of these metal extractors were built. Does not have the ability to drive up there. That sucks. 
Spacey, however, going for the defense approach. The aggressive defense approach. Not a bad approach. Not sure I totally agree with the fact that they aren't just building a factory. Like, caretaker to factory, they have the economy to make it work. At least somewhat. Or, oh, I see. They're just going to build up this. That makes sense. Build up the commander. Get it as big as possible. Izzerai, on the other hand, still playing defense. Literally just playing a bunch of defenses. I mean, if Space T wins this, it's, yeah, it's entirely up to their commander. They have some, the support forces are nice, but it's entirely up to the commander, so it's kind of this. Yeah, sorry, I don't know what's going on with the attrition widget. I modified some stuff in my ZK data. Oh, I didn't modify the backup, though. Crap. Okay, well, I mean, I can't... I'm not going to deal with it right now, because I don't want to do a Lua, Lua, Lua UI reload on stream. But, yeah, I think the attrition widget is just out of position. It's just done something weird. Or maybe not. Nope. I don't know. I it's I don't know where it is or why it's not where it should be. But it isn't, so I have no idea. Eh, this is my apologies. I really would like the attrition counter to be here. But it's not. I don't know what's happened. It's must have gone. I think it went off screen. As far as I can tell from the ZK data, it went off screen. I don't know. I thought I fixed it. I thought I set it to something decent in the ZK data, in the configuration. Apparently, I didn't. I honestly don't know. I don't know where it should be set to. I... I... Yeah, I don't know what I need to do here. Sorry. If I knew, I would be able to fix it. Because I would have fixed it by now. But yeah, at this point, we don't really have much going on here. Oh. What the? What? Okay, weird. Apparently, there's a bit of a crash. Possibly Lua UI reload will fix it. I don't know. Maybe my messing with the data broke it. I don't... No, maybe. Don't think so. Anyway, Space T still trying to push, but Caretaker's up for Izzeride, so they could build a factory any time, and building a factory would help. Although Kodachi could go down if it does. I mean, Kodachis do have healing, but now the daggers get rid of it. That is a Kodachi's down. Izzeride, they have actually managed to buy enough time in defenses. They could theoretically build another factory and use that to rebuild. It would take 30 seconds, but Space T isn't even trying. Space T's just going for the super powerful commander, like... Machine gun, cluster bomb, and a bunch of HP. I don't really see that working. Uh, okay, could, could sort of see that working. I feel like Space T should just build a factory at this point. It's been so long. It's been seven minutes into the game. Space T could just build a factory, build a character, build a factory. They have a reasonable amount of resources. Just build something so you can keep building stuff and then use that to overwhelm his ride. Just build artillery or something. I don't know, build a jump bot factory, build a firewalker, burn this whole thing down. Is right on the other hand going for a spider factory, which I'm guessing will be used just to mass fleas to come in and I mean not mass fleas. Actually no. Better option would be to get a get a widow or two. Alongside some recluses. Or just recluses, actually. Straight recluses. I don't know why I didn't think of that first. Yeah, sorry, this game I thought would be a little bit more even. Also I hadn't seen Space T yet, so I wanted to go do a game of Space T because I hadn't actually watched them play. I didn't expect there to be this prolonged cheese win? Or this cheese stalemate? Normally you don't get cheese stalemates. That's not a thing that generally happens. Normally you just get people doing cheesy things and those cheesy things are done. And that's all there is to it. But no, in this case we are actually getting a cheese into a stalemate into Space T trying to get something. And again, it's just build a factory. We have here a factory build Weaver into recluses. I mean, the thing is, right now Space T's not really contesting anything over to the north side of the map. Israel could easily build up a bunch of metal extractors over to the north side, which is exactly what they're planning on doing. Or no, they're building up wind generators first. But they could build metal extractors afterwards. Yeah. Okay, there's the caretaker. Is there a factory being built up on top of the caretaker? Please say yes. This caretaker 
This caretaker is not enough on its own. Build stuff around the caretaker. Build the factory. Please, don't just repair. I mean, repairing is good. But don't just build repair. There it is! Shield bot factory being built up. It might be too late, though rogues will work reasonably well against the use of the recluse. So I can see it. Now at this point, Space T's commander is much weaker than... Sorry, his right commander is much weaker than Space T's. This could actually work out okay. I mean, the sheer number of defenses might pose a problem to Space T's commander. Oh, and the cluster bomb could have been used for the base, but it still does some damage. Attempts to come in and take out his right commander by the scalpel don't really manage to go anywhere. That still gives enough time for the shield bot factory to be built up, though. So Space T is able to build up the shield bot factory, able to get more metal extractors of their own. Ezeride, they are going for the metal extractors over to the northwest side of the map, which is what I was hoping we would see. Because those are good metal extractors, you want them. But I don't know how well it's going to actually work overall. Again, it's like Space T can kind of walk in. They have a lot of HP. I don't know what they're so afraid of. There's one stinger. Okay, rogues are being built up. That explains everything. Again, I kind of would have gone... I, I think Firewalker would have been a better option. This is such an awkward situation. Just build Firewalker. Don't even worry about it. Ooh. Yeah, I think... See, the thing with Space D is that they can come in and... Okay, they might have to tank a stinger shot, but stinger shots are 850 damage. The shield can tank most of the stinger shot. The commander can come in, cluster bomb the defenses, and then just wipe the floor with everything else. And I think Space D has full knowledge of the position. No, not full knowledge. Partial knowledge of the positioning. Enough knowledge that they could come in at a good angle. Same time, Israel is building up. I mean, they've caught 14 metal per second. They're keeping. They keep going. They have wind generators being built up. The wind generators are only generating 0.7, but hey, get a few more of those, and if they survive long enough, maybe. Space D is pretty vulnerable right now. They are building up a felon, however, that could be en that that would be enough actually alongside the commander's shields yeah this i think this is game i really would like to see israel build a factory much sooner and then do what they're doing right now much sooner i think if they had done that it would have been space t's loss but now the game is still kind of even and it kind of comes down it comes down to this felon if the felon actually does its job then it will be win if the felon does not do its job then israel could probably expand into what is essentially normal production's capacity and take it. Weird though that sounds. Now it looks like okay, the flea's coming around the map. So Izzeride trying to see a Space D doing the same thing Izzeride's doing very wise, but not gonna find anything. Space D is entirely in front of Izzeride's base. I think if Izzeride knows this, they'll actually have a better sense of how to approach the fight. Because they if they know that Space D is entirely contained outside of their base then Izzeride can both expand basically wherever they'd like, because they know they're not going to be threatened, and also they know that if they break this, it's game over. That's really all it comes down to. I mean, it's becoming harder and harder to do that. Space T still kind of has his army advantage going in and the commander advantage going in. But, yeah, as time goes on, Izzeride is building up a larger and larger force, which is not being contested. Space T never bothered to build more metal extractors. They just wanted to get the win off of cheese. And now this Aspis is trying his best to help. Space commander taking a lot of damage. Where's the cluster bomb? Cluster bomb! There's the cluster bomb! Dealing less damage than I thought it would. Gotta be honest, you don't really see a lot of commander weapons being built up, and with all the recluses being up, it's not easy for the commander to get in. I think Space Team waited way too long. They should have done that minutes ago. Now Izzerite has a position they can actually fight from. Like, Space Team's been cowed. They're not gonna attack. At least not without trying to expand around the map, but they haven't been doing that. They've been trying to make sure Izzeride isn't doing that, despite the fact that Izzeride has been doing that. Has been doing exactly that, and getting away with it, too. Space T, on the other hand, they just don't have units, they don't have metal, they don't have... They have energy, reasonably enough. They have the commander, but they don't have any way in. And again, this is why I was thinking, why not just build Firewalkers? At the very least, that would just burn everything down, that'd be easy. But unfortunately, Space T doesn't have that. They're losing all their shields to the recluses, so they can't really push in. And any forces that try to get in will have a hell of a time actually getting through the defenses. Again, why not just go for recluses? Or actually, even... Heck, even racketeers wouldn't be a bad idea. But I just don't understand the lack of use of artillery. The only thing I can see here is Space T seems to be trying to bait out the recluses and then attack them when they're outside of their defenses. 
which I don't expect will work. I think that what will happen is that the Recluses will kind of come out of the base, and then Space T will fight them a bit, and then the Recluses will retreat back into the base, and then Space T units will follow, and then the defenses will kill them. And there's really not much Space T can do about it, because they don't have any money. And Ezerite doesn't have any way of countering this either, because Ezerite can't really go up top. They have to have spiders or jump bots to go up top. Another reason why it would have been nice to go spiders would be to check this northwest expansion and destroy it, because there's only one weaver and it doesn't have any defenses. Like, Ezerite's entire economy is naked, but it's on a hill that can't be accessed without terraform spiders or jump bots. Space T is using none of those things. So even if there was a push in here, it wiped out Ezerite's entire main base. All their economies up here. They can rebuild another factory. I wouldn't actually put it past them. They might just build an air factory or something or a gunship plant on top of this hill. Wouldn't be a bad idea, to be honest. I mean, if that happens, Ezeride can't lose. But I think Ezeride's trying to win, specifically. The Recluses are coming in, actually dealing quite a bit of damage to the commander. I mean, if that commander goes down, that's game. Like, Space will throw in the towel as soon as that commander is destroyed. And that commander is taking a significant amount of damage. And the shields are down. The Aspis is not near enough by to actually help replenish Space T's commander's shields. And as much as Space T is trying, they're also losing a lot of energy to that shield. How much is that draining? Yeah, it should be, I think, minus 10. But it can't even drain that much because of the production. Well, Space T's going for it, and this is probably going to be a bad idea. The Dirtbag's taking most of the brunt of the fire. That's, that is good. It allows for the Vanus and Commander to get him. The Commander is going to go down. It will not be able to even get the close bomb up before dying. The commander down, that is going to be it. Space T has nothing to work with. And there's the self-destruct. There's a towel throw. Space T dragging a cheese game into 16 minutes. I mean, part of that is that Israel didn't rebuild when they had the chance. But really, Space T could have won that so much earlier. They just got afraid of the defenses, not realizing their commander could just punch through them no problem. And also, just build a factory early. Build the metal extractors. When you have a contain like that, the best thing you can do is take the entire map. Because at that point, if you have the entire map to your name, your opponent could try to break the contain, and hey, you still have 40 metal per second behind you and the rest of the map that you've claimed. They can't do anything about that. Or not easily, at least. Certainly not like that. Still, though, I think if Spacey had gone for the Jump Bot Factory, that would have at least given the Firewalker... That would have put a lot of pressure on Easter Ride, possibly forcing them into a bait situation where the Recluses would be in a bad position and then could be attacked. Also would allow for Pyros to go over here and wipe out this entire Northwest. But that was not the choice that was made. Space D went for Shieldbot Factory. When you do cheese like that, you gotta think about all the different options if you have to recover. Because it's not just to build a factory, it's specifically what units do you need to finish the job. And Shield's don't really provide that when you're dealing with such tough defenses. Especially when your opponent is going to go for skirmishers. Because that's what you do to break contain. Like, go for the skirmishers. Because you can attack the defenses from a reasonably large distance. If they have any units that are coming in, they can be willed away before getting close to the base. I mean, there's nowhere to retreat to, so Israelite has to fight at as large a range as possible. <sighs> well, anyway, that was actually that. That was the holy... <laughs> Oh no, Catastrophe and Malric are still going on. So I could probably get into that. Oops. Probably get into that game. See what is going on there. Because it might be over by now. I'm not sure. Catastrophe and Malric is over. So we are moving on to round six, the final round. I mean, apart from tiebreakers, which are likely. Let's see. Man no, actually no. Manu is solid five. West is a solid four one. FZ, Petrol, Catastrophe, Israel, Kingstad, Cat Lady are all tied. Oh, Cat Lady's doing really well. I haven't seen them play. Let's go see them play. Oh, it's Israel versus Cat Lady, though. It's already a map of Donna. Ah! Okay, we'll do Manitol versus FFC. I feel really bad for Cat Lady. I was going to cast their game with Exploit, but Exploit's gone. So I couldn't. It was a free buy. Yep. That was a thing. I feel bad. I, I, well, anyway. I mean, lots of people want to see Is It Right again, but the last, last one I really should do, like, the top bracket spots. Like, Manu and FFC. Like, will Manu maintain an uncontested lead? 
avoid three ties or podium positions. Thanks. Oh boy, yeah. If Mano loses this and FFC wins this, it's gonna be five one. That's gonna suck. Anyway, move on to round six. The tournament has been going reasonably quickly, but I would rather not have a full like, three-way tie bracket stuff. We'll see what happens, though. Anyway, stay tuned as we move on to round six.